Imagine this. It's a bright, warm, sunny afternoon and you're spending your day outside. There's not a cloud in the sky and you can hear the birds chirping peacefully. But within seconds, that all can change. If a nuclear blast occurs, you'd be gone in a flash. You wouldn't have time to process what's about to happen. Within impact, you'd be wiped out completely. But what if a nuclear blast happened in seven days? Would that be enough time to prepare? Would you be able to survive? These are some of the questions I will be answering in today's video. Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to life's biggest questions. The voice you're currently listening to belongs to me, Lindsay Ivan, your voice of reason for today's video, which is what if a nuclear blast happened in seven days? But before I begin, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Life's Biggest Questions. And don't forget to stick around to the end of the video where I shout out your comments from my previous videos. With that being said, let's dive on into the video. With tons of countries having increased access to nuclear weapons, it's scary to think of the devastating effects it could have on the world. All it takes is one country to do the unthinkable, and millions of lives would be changed forever. But it's not only nuclear weapons we have to worry about. We have nuclear power plants or reactors that could also explode. Think of Chernobyl for example. So let's start off by looking at the devastating effects the blast could have. When a nuclear blast occurs, four things happen. First you have the blast itself, second you have the release of thermal radiation, third you have ionizing radiation, and lastly you have residual radiation. Most damage would be done directly from the blast. The energy released is so powerful that it can literally melt your skin off your body and cause fires. On top of that, it would crush objects and destroy buildings. Most injuries occur from humans being flung back at high speeds or being crushed by collapsing structures. The blast can also rupture eardrums and lungs. If we look at the 1945 atomic bombing of Hiroshima for example, the blast was so powerful that people up to a mile from the bomb were vaporized. All that was left of them were their shadows burnt into stone. But the destructive effects wouldn't stop there. If you survive the blast, chances are you will die in a firestorm as a result of the thermal radiation. This would consume most of the oxygen. So people who have managed to survive the bomb in underground bunkers would then be killed as all the oxygen is sucked out of the atmosphere. Then we have the effects of the radiation. After the bomb goes off, radioactive dirt and debris will fall down on that area. This can occur from up to several miles from where the blast occurred. It's said that the follow is most dangerous in the first few hours after the detonation. That's when it gives off the highest levels of radiation, but it can affect the area for one to five years. That's right, this blast would have a huge lasting impact. Citizens who managed to survive the initial blast would be killed from the radioactive fallout. The amount of radiation they would be exposed to would be lethal. Exposure to high levels of radiation includes hair loss, bleeding from the mouth, internal bleeding, ulcers, delirium, cancer, and you can even fall into a terminal coma. After about a decade, survivors began suffering from thyroid, breast, lung, and other cancers at higher than normal rates. Along with this, pregnant women were at a high risk to miscarry or to give birth to a child with birth defects or abnormalities. The children might also develop cancer later on in life. For the Chernobyl tragedy, it is reported that the accident was responsible for nearly 20,000 cases of thyroid cancer from being exposed to the radiation. The bigger the population, the more people that will be affected by this nuclear blast. Within the first few months of the bombing of Hiroshima, between 90,000 to 166,000 people died. In Nagasaki, 60,000 to 80,000 people died. So not only would this blast kill thousands, even millions of people, it would also destroy all surrounding areas of the blast. In Hiroshima, 70% of buildings were destroyed and burnt down due to the blast. In total, 92% of the structures in the city were either destroyed or damaged by blast and fire. Whereas the nuclear power plant explosion in the Ukraine affected people over 1,700 miles away. The radioactive rain from the explosion hit all across northern Europe, from Scandinavia to Scotland and even to Wales. That 
that's insane. But the deadly effects of the blast don't stop there. The radiation would also affect the environment. The nuclear material would leak into the soil, contaminating the food, soil, and water supply. Again, in the Chernobyl incident, the radioactive materials leaked into pastures and was eaten by cows, and was later found in their milk that children were drinking. This would most certainly happen again leaving us with a contaminated food and water supply. Now let's say we did know the blast was going to happen in 7 days. What would happen then? Well damn, it's going to be like the first couple of days of lockdown from the pandemic all over again. But 10 times worse. Products would be flying off the shelves. Grocery stores would be crowded. Tin food and bottled water especially would be the first to go. Everyone would be stocking up on supplies to make sure they had enough food to last them for months. Grocery stores would be extremely overwhelmed. In fact, they may lose some of their staff members since they probably want to go out and prepare for themselves and their own family. Plus, who wants to work when they may end up dying in 7 days anyway? Not only that, but everyone would be trying to get their hands on potassium iodine. Potassium iodine is said to block radioactive iodine from being absorbed by the thyroid gland, protecting them from radiation related injuries. The amount of panic would be insane. In fact, I could see people fighting others for supplies. When people know impending doom is on the way, it will make them act crazy. It will probably trigger their primal instincts, killing others for supplies, doing whatever they can to survive. Now, if the blast was only going to occur in one country or city, then the residents there would have 7 days to flee, if they were able to do so. Not all residents would be able to, some might even be stuck in traffic trying to escape. Then they would have to find housing somewhere else far away from where the blast would occur. On the 7th day, no one would be outside. Those that couldn't evacuate would be inside their homes, in their own bomb shelter that they made. Meanwhile, proper bomb shelters would be super packed and crowded. There certainly wouldn't be enough shelter for everyone. Those that were unable to seek shelter would be killed from the blast. Those that survived would be in the shelters for a while until it's safe to leave. But like I mentioned before, it takes 1 to 5 years before it's fully safe again. Maybe even longer. There's no way they can last that long. They would eventually run out of resources, forcing them to leave their home and exposing them to the radioactive fallout. Not only that, but their entire city would be in rubble. There wouldn't be any place for them to go. If they needed more supplies, grocery stores would be destroyed, or the food would be contaminated. Sure, they could try to go to neighboring areas for help, but first off, Chances are that the streets and roads would be completely destroyed. And also, who's going to be willing to help hazardous people? They would be carrying radioactive dust on them, and they would need to be decontaminated. This brings me to my next point. Say the nuclear blast only affected one country. Sadly, they wouldn't be able to receive much help from other countries around the world. Sending people into a highly radioactive area puts them at risk. There is no equipment available to fully protect them from this. Some of the radiation would end up seeping through. This is highlighted by the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings. A high percentage of the volunteers who came into the cities after the bombings to help also died from the radiation. And sadly, in their own city, hospitals along with their life saving equipment would be destroyed. And doctors and first responders would be among the victims that also need help. In Hiroshima, 90% of physicians and nurses were killed or injured, and 42 out of 45 hospitals were non-functional. They would be left on their own fighting to survive. Now if the entire world was going to be affected by this blast, then that would be a different story. Countries would stop exporting items, and instead they would be keeping them for themselves and their citizens. Screw laws and being civil. Streets would be trashed, stores would be robbed, everyone would be panicking trying to survive. Some countries would be low on supplies if they aren't getting certain imports. There would be a high demand for canned food, but you really think that companies are still going to be in operation during a time like this? No, everything would be shut down while people go out to try and get supplies and get ready for this tragedy. Then, depending on the size of the blast, that would determine how many people would be affected and killed. Those that survive would then have to deal with living in a world completely different, one that is filled with rubble and completely destroyed. They would literally have to try to build the world from the ground up again. They wouldn't have electricity or running water. All that would be destroyed, so everyone would have to come together to try and rebuild everything. That would take years. So if a nuclear blast happened in 7 days, 
nothing good would come of it. Clearly, that's a given. The results would be so devastating and destructive. It would be so hard to live in a world where a deadly nuclear blast occurred. So let's hope that this never, ever happens. And that's all for today's video. Let's move on to our comment shout out portion. I'll be shouting out comments from my video What if Donald Trump put his face on Mount Rushmore? Robert Bruce commented If Trump's face were carved on that mountain, it would have to be painted orange every few years. That would be hilarious, but I don't think he would be too fond of that. The Jazz King commented, You would then see me on Mount Rushmore defacing it. I feel like a lot of people would deface it. If that's even possible, that thing would be massive. Shark the Gamer commented, You guys are my faves. Keep doing what you're doing. Oh, thanks so much. That's so sweet. I appreciate comments like that. Eden Wheeler commented, Don't give the Cheeto ideas. Oh my gosh. Calling him a Cheeto. I love it. That's hilarious. And that's all the comments I'm shouting out for today's video. Make sure to comment something down below for a chance to be featured in my next comment shout out. And as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Life's Biggest Questions for more thought provoking videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and stay curious, YouTube.